Welcome back, everybody. Thanks for sticking around. Um, for some of you, this might have been the one that you uh, skipped directly to, so uh, welcome. So one of the things that I've done is I modeled up this, uh, uh, we're calling the, the part, the main body. Um, but I, if you're familiar with fusion, I broke rule number one. In creating this component or this part, um, I didn't compartmentalize my features into a component even though this is an assembly, um, I wanted the file, the F3D file, um, to be the container for all of my features. Because what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start a pump assembly file. Now this is just like Sorta Works, this is just like Inventor, where I intentionally want the different files to be their own file type. I want the main body to be a part file, I want the pump assembly to be a pump assembly. Right? So, um, what I've done is I've just created new files and I save them um, in my project and I place the main body at zero zero of the assembly and I'm going to place an empty file with no geometry in it um, into the assembly because what we've introduced here in the latest March release is a preview technology called edit in place. Edit in place unlocks the ability to model within an assembly file, but you're editing reference parts. It makes it work like Inventor and Sorta works, right? So here, what we can do, I just modeled a gasket. I projected geometry. I did all the modeling that you saw in the previous four videos, but I did it within the assembly file, but I was singularly editing a reference component. You couldn't do this prior to, uh, prior to the March release. So it's, it's, it fundamentally unlocks um, the ways in which teams can now distribute the work of an assembly. You can all work on the same a file at the same time, the same design, I should say, at the same time. Um, this is a familiar workflow to people like me. Um, I've been using Inventor for 20 years, um, and the distributed assembly model is something that is, is something that I just learned, that's how I learned how to model. So having this functionality now in Fusion is, um, well, it was exciting enough for me to bust out a tutorial for the first time in, I don't know, six or seven years um, that I've done one because it's, uh, I had a heck of a lot of fun using uh, this methodology to model up this assembly. So uh, open up the part file, make a change to it. I apply the material, I change the, uh, uh, the appearance of it. It says, hey, um, you're in the assembly, uh, somebody's updated the file, do you want to consume those updates? Well, heck yeah, hit update, it, is, it consumed those updates and I'm, I'm carrying forward. So again, I'll create a new empty file type, I'll name it end cap, I'll bring it into the origin um, of the assembly and I'll begin my modeling by activating edit in place. So I'm isolating all my new modeling um, down to the uh, to the assembly file. This is it, it, Sorry that I'm that I'm giddy about this stuff, guys. But uh, I really I really enjoy modeling in this methodology. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and you know we're going to speed up the the video here because uh, if you want to see some of my modeling best practices, sketching best practices, watch the previous four videos of this series and and you'll see some of that. So we're gonna um, we're gonna fast forward uh, through all this and yeah, it's it's a lot of the same things. Um, but what's going to happen here is the, um, well, I'll just, I'll just get right down to it. I had an oh shit moment. Um, we've all had them where we're modeling, we're going fast and, oh no, I forgot something. Right. Um, and believe it or not, I didn't do this on purpose while modeling this out. I genuinely messed up, uh, because I'm, I'm sitting here, I'm sketching this out and I start sketching these circles and I'm like, well, there should be a hole there and I'll even, so I didn't even edit this out of the video. I'll go up and you'll see me actually stop the recording. Cause I'm like, what, what's going on? Like I shouldn't have to know what the distance of the circle is. Shouldn't it be there? Like something was off. So we've all done this before. And, um, in recording this, I really like, this is, this is, I've even got the video sped up and you can see how long I sat there on that dimension going, Oh, what, what the heck? Oh, I see what I did. So I'm going to delete that dimension, finish the sketch. I'm going to get out of the edit in place, and I'm going to activate 
the edit in place of the main body. So I didn't have to open up the file. I, I, I'm gonna do all my modification here. Um, extremely convenient. Um, I'm gonna find the uh, uh, the whole pattern. So it's 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 that final feature that I did um, earlier in the uh, in in the tutorial series here. So I'm gonna find the the whole pattern. I'll find the sketch associated to it, and I need to go in and and um, modify this sketch to make my changes. Okay. So I want to add another another point here, one on each side. And um, go ahead and dimension where, where it should be. This, this is why I shouldn't have had to place the circle in my new, in my new part because the hole should have been there. <laughs> Just why it really threw me off. So I made a modification to my sketch. Do I create a new hole? No. Modify the existing hole so it's the same as, as the rest of them in, in that grouping. And now I can carry forward. So I'll go up to the assembly and I'll save it. And it's going gonna, it's gonna to push down those save, those changes down to the components that I referenced. Now, this is this is fundamentally different um, than anything in any other CAD system I've ever used. We push the reference down to the part file. We don't manage the reference at the assembly file. Now, what that means is I, I don't have to have enormous assemblies open. I can open up the part file in isolation of itself, but I can still always have the context. So we called it context. We push the context of what was referenced down to the part file. Now, when people talk about large assembly performance and, and all those other types of things, yes, you, you, want your, you want to be able to open up big assemblies, no doubt. But do you want to be able to work while you have a large assembly open? Or do you just very every now and again, need to be able to reference another piece of geometry in another part. This unlocks a number of workflows that I'm, I'm telling you, I'm super excited about. I can't wait for you guys to get your hands on this because I think it's, it's, it's just going to fundamentally change some workflows when you're working in a distributed environment. So I know what you're thinking. I, I've lost my mind, probably have, but let me show you why this is so flipping cool. So if I just open up the end cap, okay, this is just the part file. You can see that in the browser on the left-hand side, we've got assembly context, okay? The assembly context, uh, let's say I forgot something. Let's say I forgot to do something. It's pretty common, Rob, uh, uh, you know, a little flighty sometimes. So what I can do is I can activate the context. And what it does is it brings down a part from the assembly that I might need to use as reference. Normally, you'd have to open up the assembly to get this information. I push the context down to the part file. This is awesome. Okay, so yeah, sorry, I'm, I will get, no, I'm, you know, sorry, not sorry. This is awesome, right? Now, I, I know this is a terrible example, but the technology is, is, is better than the example here. But let's just say, for example, I wanted to wrap this face around um, what I forgot to project. Well, I don't have to open up the assembly to do this, All right? So I really think that this is going to change a lot of workflows. It's going to unlock a lot of things that um, that I can't wait to see what you guys do with it. So appreciate everybody sticking around for this tutorial series. I had a lot of fun doing it. Um, I actually have a lot of video of me modeling up the whole part and assembling the whole thing together. Uh, I'll probably put out the videos of that uh, next week. So enjoy.